Good evening. This is Larishka, Clan Leader of Sinister Sage. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about our, our X Hanger battles that we were having in our tournament. Uh, Sinister Sage put up a X Hanger tournament for our clan, uh, for all Sage clans, and for Tet Court clans, which are our allies, and for Vast Euthanasia clans, which are our other allies. Um, so I'd like to go briefly into the details of our uh, tournament that we set up, and I'll walk you briefly through the rules, and I'll show you the X-Hanger, which I'm showing you right now, and I will try to show you uh, gameplay. I may not talk through gameplay though. I do apologize. I, I have a bit of a cold, so if my voice breaks or cracks, I, I, I do apologize. It can't be helped at the moment. So anyway, let's get started before I lose my voice again. Okay, so we're having an X hanger tournament. That means that is Pixonix hanger that they gave to you. Originally, we had started out and practiced for several weeks with a different hanger. And the X hanger changed this week. And so we have these new bots that no one has tried out yet and we're all excited. Well, some of us are and some of us aren't. So anyway, we have a leech, an igniter leech. We have a nightingale, which I was really excited about. We have a cryo Ravana, um, our Makes Pulsar Phantom, and an avalanche behemoth. So, very interesting X hanger. Um, Nightingale would be the support bot. Out of all of them, I think the Ravana is probably the strongest. Your Phantom is probably the throwaway with the Marques on it. It just does not do well with uh, mid range weapons. You really need brawling weapons on it. Halos or. I use magnets personally, but I'm I'm not that enthralled with them. But anyway, let's we don't want to talk about that. We're gonna talk about X Hanger in this tournament. So if you're in the Sinister Sage server and you look and you see all of our tournament channels, we have the rules channel that explains to you about the tournament, we have the chat for the tournament, we had the chat to sign up looking for a partner, we had the chat that lists all the teams. We have a substitute player list, problems that you run into with the tournament so I can address it as it happens, maybe change the rules because our tournament is for fun. There is no monetary prize. You are supposed to make friends and have a good time. And then we have tournament videos because lots of people in our clan like to record, which is great. You can't learn if you can't see and I just like watching them, so that's great. Now, if you scroll all the way down on our server which is quite long each team has their own comms as well that the other teams can't access the only two people on the duo can access these comms which is great because then you have a private place to go practice or to run your match so that no one will bother you so I made sure those were up coming back up here we go in look at our channel we have the X hanger and we talk about substitutes 
if for some reason you can only get three players to show up, two from one team and one from another, uh, because we are an international clan and we have many international friends, you can find a substitute and they would be on the substitute list. And as long as you tell me, it's fine. Just play the game and have fun. That is so much better than both teams forfeiting. So, I, I hope some of these matches get done this week. Um, there's Steph talking about that the mode will be in TDM. And if there is a tie on kills, there's 50,000. Most damage wins. If the match ends and there's less than 50,000 on one side, consider it a draw. That's from our previous X hanger list and live surfer list. Wrong hanger drops, you have three chances to get the right hanger in until it's considered a loss. You can have spectators as long as both sides agree. We had someone volunteer to record our matches, but we've had several people volunteer. It's just fun to spectate. Um, as long as you don't interfere, I don't mind. There is a list of all of our teams that signed up. All 17 teams, I'm really excited 17 teams signed up. So, how do you get to this tournament? Aha! You go to Battlefly, because we registered it on Battlefly, so that we had tournament brackets. And there's that beautiful poster that Death made for us with the original X-Hanger we were practicing with. Which, isn't that great? Okay. So this was basically the brief bio. Talking about our X-Hanger games. You can't use your personal hangers. Anything in the X-Hanger is game. And you need three games per match. And a screenshot of the M score for each game required. And here's your participants, all 17 of our lovely teams, and the pending ones, that we've sent out, but that's okay. And then we go to our brackets, and you can see who's listed, and there was my team, Crimson Lore, and we were against Bionic Wolves How, and we won, and there's a way, this is how you would go and register your score, see this side would be my side on the left, and there's Bionic Wolves Howl on the right. It says report match issues change score. What I did is I uploaded my screenshot to game one and game two, told them which one I uh, won, who won. You have to tell each one who won. And yes, I have a sense of humor. I don't have the screenshot for game three because we didn't play it. So there's kitties and the blonde lady from the meme. <laughs> but anyway, you can have a private chat, you could have it flipped to see who goes first, you don't really need to do that, it's TDM random map. But anyway, let's change score, if you had to report an issue, somebody was cheating, somebody doesn't want to listen to the rules, that's rarely going to happen on Sage, but whatever, it's there, you just DM me too and I'll take care of it. Anyway, there's the participants, and here was the brackets. So we have... Okay! So, let's go onward, let's go back to Discord. So you saw all that good stuff, and... There's the Sinister Sage family on Battlefly. Click on that, and you can go there instead. If we have any future tournaments, they'll be listed. All five of our clans. I can't wait. This was so exciting, this tournament. Okay. Alright, onward to the match. Thank you. Hope you enjoy watching. Okay. So, now the match is getting ready to start. We are sitting here and talking and trying to talk to my partner, Crimson Typhoon, about what strategy we should use. We actually, we really should have practiced beforehand. Um, <laughs> but 
We didn't. This is the first time I've ever played an X Hanger game with him, and we were talking about what we were going to drop if we could team up and how we were going to support one another. And he's a little bit more aggressive than I am, so I decided to be a support player. And we're talking right here quickly, because you only have 10 seconds, about what to drop. And you got to make sure that you don't drop your own hanger, but the X hanger, which is on the far, far right. It's very, very quickly passed through. He decided he was going to go in the Cryo Ravana, and I was going to, he told me to drop in the Igniter Leech, which it, I, I was dubious because I didn't think this combo would work very well, but it works fantastic. He's trying out the abilities right now. He said he really liked it. So anyway, your cryo has a 300 meter range, and then when it goes and you get a snowflake above you, you, you take more damage and you slow down, which in hindsight with igniters and the leech's ability is rather nasty. So when he went and froze everybody, um, I went and took them out with the igniters, which is the medium weapon on the leech. And that's a high damage output per second. And I just didn't realize how deadly this combo would be. Um, the leech's ability, if it latches on, whatever it latches on to, uh, if it takes damage, it gives the other, whatever it's latched on to, that damage. So I was trying to make sure I was a shield for Crimson and they couldn't shoot him because I need him to stay alive. He is more important than I am. So that is my main job is to protect him. I am not trying to kill people. I'm just trying to keep them away from him. And Mr. Mame is is trying to rush and get us and break us apart. If they could have broken, broken us apart, they would have had a far better chance and they probably would have had a better outcome for this match. And that would be the best thing, is someone to be able to distract us and um, break us apart. But coming after us one by one is not good. They both died. I don't even know what Getsuga was in that bot. I'm not even sure. It just got obliterated. See, I let Crimson uh, freeze them with the cryo. And then I hit the igniter. Well, I just died here, obviously. I, I can't take a full hit of that. The health does go down. And my first thought was to get back to Crimson to try to save him to keep them from killing him because he needs to stay alive because this is a TDM. So I grabbed the Nightingale, which is a support bot. It's a flying support bot, brand new. Never played with one before. I don't know if I like it, but for this match, it was fantastic. It is healing him. I have a really neat viewpoint. It's shooting automatic little light beams at them. And it's suppressing the enemy. Meaning that their uh, weapons are not doing as much damage as they could be. So they did kill poor Crimson again. But this uh, Nightingale, which is what this robot is called, has two Coronas on it. Which are the medium lockdown shotgun and one Halo. And that's pretty deadly too. But you have to be in a 300 meter range or it does nothing. It's, the shot is too scattered. So I see that Mr. Mame also has a uh, Nightingale out. And I was just basically trying to go and lock them down. If they popped out in the open like I did there. Maybe corner shooting. So that Crimson can go and shoot them with whatever he has. And he has an Igniter Leech. So we have to stay close. We can't stay back. And he has his ability activated. Now, while it's in the air, it cannot go and fire. So, like I said, my main job was to keep Crimson alive. That is the only thing I was focused on. To block shots from him, to stay out of the front of him uh, if I needed him to shoot, and to keep people away from him so he could shoot them. This is a fantastic view of the Nightingale. That looks like a spaceship. Um, I found the most perfect vantage point. It, not every map has a vantage point like this, um, but I can shoot them from where I'm at. I'm sitting on this little fantastic ledge here, and they have a major problem because I'm too high up for them to shoot. I just suppressed Mr. Mame again in his behemoth. Um, and Crimson just took him out like in a second. The, hem the behemoth would be good. As a team play bot on a long range map. 
on the short range map, it's kind of a sitting duck. Because for you to use all four weapons, you have to um, bastion it. Its feet get stuck to the ground, so you can't move. So it's a sitting turkey. Crimson's using cover excellently. I'm guessing... I didn't realize Mr. Mame was bought it out here. I was waiting. But I'm focusing on Getsuga. If Crimson goes one way, I'm going to go the other way. Because I want to try to help him. You always, when you are hunting down and focusing on one enemy together with a teammate, you always want to try to work with your teammate to go and surround that target. So if one comes in from the right, you want to come in from the left. But I don't want to leave him either or be too far away from him. So that's what I am focusing on. And see, he's so focused on my teammate, he doesn't realize I dropped him behind him. I'm locking him down. Crimson's shooting him from behind. And he's dead. And me getting kills doesn't matter. I don't care about that. What I care about is keeping Crimson alive. So I follow him like Lou. That's my job. If we were to split up, we would be so much easier as a target, but we're not going to. Mitsuga's using cover pretty good here. And he has a Ravana. Which, that is the strongest spot in the X-Hanger. Able to get rid of all the abilities, suppression things, and lockdown things every time it goes into a different dimension. But you can't rush with it. You have to corner shoot. Against the leech, it's somebody that knows what they're doing. It's very difficult. Now, the match can't end because Sheldon is spectating, and Sheldon is sitting up on the wall. He found a fantastic vantage point. He spectated exactly like he should. He stayed away from people. Targeting was affected slightly, but he was excellent. So he has a bird's eye view of the whole match. Now, I guess he, did, he wouldn't realize that um, the match... Our, our teammates had bought it out, our opposing team. So, we're going to walk over to him and look at him. I don't want to shoot him, because if I shoot him, that's damage against him. And that calculates on my score. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So, anyway, we don't want to shoot him, we're just looking at him. And he just destroyed himself, because he realized that he was the only one left. But that is how you want to do it. We were talking about what setups could we use and what kind of teamwork could we do on a long range map versus what we could do on a short range map. And this is a short range map with lots of twists and turns. It actually worked out perfect. And you see Crimson had a much higher damage score than I did, and that's okay too. I'm asking Mame and Getsuga if they would like a minute to talk strategy before the next game, because I'm not sure if they had time to practice together or not. Crimson and I didn't. Uh, our schedules don't quite match up for that. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I'm always making jokes or something, but to play this match without my children hanging on me and, and saying, Mommy, I need a drink, or Mommy, I need another plate of food, I had to go and sit in our laundry room with the door shut. <laughs> well, my aunt watched them. So I was joking about that. I do have a sense of humor. <laughs> At least I thought I did. I don't know. Might be a dead sense of humor. So anyway, um, yeah, I asked them if they wanted to go and play. We were talking about that our six-pack training really helped us because Crimson and I play six-pack and we're on different teams. And that is just, in its heyday, it was just so competitive and it gave you so many skills that you need to survive in the game it really helped me and that's where I picked up most of my skills at was going to six pack practices which is level six robots or specific robots they used to be all old school but there's some new ones allowed and level six weapons and usually weapons that aren't overpowered because you don't want one weapon to dominate on the field it's supposed to be a balanced fight that you only worry about on skill and not the, somebody coming in with MK2 things. So that's why there's a level cap as well. Um, but anyways, that's not what this video is about. But that's what we were talking about between me and him and Mr. Mame and Getsuga in the middle of this and at the end is the uh, 
six-pack training really helped us to work as a team. And that's what this tournament is for too. This is to, to train you in new robots, brand new robots that just came to the game, and to get you skills with them so that when you see them on the field, you know what to do with them, you know how to take care of them, it's giving you training, you're working with a teammate, which is indicative to winning a match on a live server game. You have to work with your teammates or you lose. So, and, um, I don't know, just to have fun. And I don't think they were having very much fun, but I, I apologize for that. <laughs> I didn't think about this when I, I agreed to be Crimson's teammate. I forgot that, that I was a good player, which sounds awful. But, um, I'm, I'm just used to standing in the background and offering support or, or, or killing something that's killing one of my teammates. So... I don't normally think about teamwork as being deadly. And we're talking right now about where to drop. A, C, B. I think we picked A. I was worried that it was going to time out. You only have 10 seconds to pick. Same setup is what we talked about. I'm following Crimson around. And this map has a fantastic amount of cover. This is the perfect brawling map. Your igniter has 350 meter range. It can bend around corners, so you can try to corner shoot. You need to corner shoot. Crimson is rushing in there, and I'm trying to keep up with him because he is my buddy. I can't let him go in there by himself. My targeting keeps switching to uh, Sheldon, but he's in a good spot. He did a really good job of staying out of the way. I latched on, and then I realized he's latched on to Crimson. So, let him shoot me. My damage that I take goes back to him. Now it's good to shoot him. I'm just trying to be the shield for Crimson. He can shoot over me with the Ravana. I'm letting him go in a little bit, because he can kind of save himself with his ability. You really need to look at the abilities and what they do and how they work. For his bream of uh, bullets... Uh, he used them all and was reloading and he was about done. That's when I started to fire. Why? Because that finished the job. You want to make sure that you, you try to do that. I was trying to tell people. And see, I got stuck in the open. I, I did a, a stupid move. I should have went backwards with Crimson and I didn't, so I lost the bot. But that's okay. I have the Nightingale, and my job now is to heal Crimson, and I'm trying to catch up to him and his super speedy Ravana, and I'm trying to suppress the enemy. If I suppress them and they do less damage to him, that's great. That means he has a better chance at surviving, so I'm doing my job. And those blasts even have a little bit of damage to them, which I didn't realize. Trying to stick with my partner. Corner shooting. He's shooting before the target came from around the corner because he's using splash damage because that's the cryo has that. And he's pre-shooting so if the target is coming around the corner, he's shooting them. It also makes your weapons empty faster. And, uh, empty faster. So, um, you want to make sure that you are not stuck in the open like I was with my leech. With nothing in your guns to defend yourself with, you're basically a sitting duck stuck out in the open with cover. With no cover. I'm waiting for... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice again. I'm waiting for one of them to rush. I can drop, jump in the air and suppress them if I have to. I'm watching Crimson's damage. To hang back and let them come to you is a good strategy, which is what Crimson was doing, and then rushing forward when they couldn't get away from cover. And see, you were trying to go and pin him, and I could have went on the other side of him and shot him, but for what he was, I could have flanked him. 
I was afraid to go and get stuck, and I didn't know what Mr. Mame was in. I was worried about Mr. Mame coming from behind, and I don't want to lose the bot. So instead, I did it the cautious way. I see Crimson's losing his health. I hurry up and fly, trying to save him, and I'm healing him, and he was healing himself too. And I did. I did kill somebody with air support, which is the suppression ability on the Nightingale. I killed poor Kitsuga. So, watching, watching. I was going to focus on Getsuga. Miss Crimson is going after Mr. Mame. Worried, because I don't know what he has. And they have phantoms. And the phantom, unfortunately, in this X hanger is the throwaway bot. It has Marquise on it. Marquise is a mid-range light. It does nothing. On a phantom, whose ability is to charge in and be like a small tank and shoot people and blink back, you needed halos, something with a high damage output per second, blazes, gusts, something like that. Marquez does nothing. This would be, You would want this to be a ranged bot. Or maybe in a situation on a long range map, this is your turkey bot where you go and you pretend you are a wounded bird to get your enemy team to come out into the open and then your teammate shoots them with the behemoth because the behemoth has avalanche on them that's a 500 meter range um and you blink back to safety that's a possible combination too i don't know if it'll work but we i was thinking about that to see if we could get it to do Trying to keep Crimson alive. He only has a little bit of health. I see that he's leeched. I do not want to shoot Getsuga in the Igniter Leech. I'm going to shoot him now if I get a hold of him, but I also don't want to go and lose the Nightingale. Trying to lock him down so that he stops moving as fast. I get him to take damage. Staying away from the corners because that damage does wrap around corners. Uh, targeting, get off of Sheldon. You can lock your targeting, but then I can't switch between the players as easier. And I am way too focused on trying to stay with Crimson. And to make sure that I am not stuck out in the open in front of him or in a line of fire. I need to always find cover. I did not think this was going to go well. But Crimson got Mr. Mame. And Mr. Mame is over there in the corner and I'm panicking. We both died. We went into a bad spot. But I have three bots left. We went into a bad spot. And Crimson is being support now. So now I have to be the aggressor. I'm deciding what to do. Trying out the bot. Trying to get over to cover. Because I don't want to go and be stuck out with Avalanche shooting me with splash damage from Mr. Mame. Trying to save my abilities to get to cover. And to get out of the way. I'm Leech, so I don't want to shoot him. I was. But I just wanted to give him a little bit of damage to make him slower. So that maybe I could get a hold of him. And now he's out in the open and I'm shooting him. I don't mind that I let him go. I don't want to stand out in the middle of cover. And see, and there Crimson got him. He was slightly slower than he's supposed to be. And Crimson got him with Splash. Which is fantastic. That's what you need for a good teammate. They're watching and trying to see if they can help you. And looking for an opening. So my idea was Crimson stuck over there in the behemoth. It can't move because it has the, the bastion. So I was thinking that I was going to go and flank them and get closer. But I see Gatsuga's moving. So he's within weapon range. I rush. He's going to shoot me. And it just... The avalanche does not unload fast enough to take out the Ravana. It's not as fast as the cryo.
Oh, and there's a nightingale. I could be in trouble. So I go, and I believe Crimson is deaf. I don't know where Crimson's at. I was just focusing on getting rid of Mr. Mame and the avalanches. Um, I'm looking at my weapons and what I have left. I don't have very much left. I should have hit my heel, but I didn't have a chance. And yes, Crimson was healing me. I didn't realize he was. I was too focused. So I have a Phantom. And Phantom, like I said, is your basically your throwaway bot. <sighs> Crimson is doing Nightingale against Nightingale. They look like little UFOs flying. I apologize for losing my voice. If you don't remember, I did say I was sick, so I, I am not quite as sharp as I normally am. I apologize if I repeat myself. And that was the last bot. It worked out very nice. We weren't quite as coordinated this time. We didn't work as well together. But in other instances we did, we just made sure that's the main thing in teamwork is to stick with your buddy and find them on the battlefield. So we accomplished that pretty well. And that was devastating for the other team. Weapon ranges matter. Abilities matter. Making sure you know how the abilities work is a good thing. If this match actually mattered and it wasn't a for fun tournament, um, <laughs> I don't think I would be as relaxed about supporting my teammate, but I did give it a go. I tried my best. <laughs> uh, uh, we are talking. You're supposed to play three matches, three games, but um, uh, I couldn't get Mr. Mame back. He had to go. So... We were going to play one with Sheldon, and Sheldon disconnected. Alright, thank you very much, and may you have a lovely day.